Despite a momentary ceasefire, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu asserts that efforts to disband Hamas will continue post-pause. With the conflict now reaching from Gaza's north to south, what changes can we expect? We have brought in a former Israeli intelligence official for expert insights on the evolving situation. And now joining us is Avi Milamid, a former Israeli intelligence official and founder of Inside the Middle East. So. Avi, I wanted to ask you uh, about uh, Israel's military advance into uh, southern Gaza. Um, how challenging do you think that would be for Israeli forces? Yes, thank you for having me. It will be very challenging. We have to remember that uh, Hamas um, operational uh, modus operandi is based upon uh, first and foremost entrenching itself inside deep in a massively uh, populated areas, civilians areas. So we saw the examples in the northern part of Gaza Strip with the hospitals, for example, where Hamas has a huge um, underground tunnels and infrastructure beneath hospitals, beneath mosques, beneath uh, public facilities. We should expect something similar and more in the southern part of Gaza Strip. There is something significant about the southern part of Gaza Strip, which is different from the northern part. There are eight um, refugee camps, Palestinian refugee camps in the southern part of Gaza Strip. Now, I want to be clear when, when I'm saying refugee camps, I know that some people in the West may have an image of tents or tin cans. That's, that is not the case. When we are talking about refugee camps in the southern part of Gaza Strip, we are talking about a massively urban areas. We are talking about areas with buildings. Some of them are high uh, raising buildings. It's not tins, uh, cans and, and, and tents. It, this is a very massively populated area. Um, we also know that Hamas, some of Hamas leaders originated in that specific area in the south part of Gaza Strip. So on and all, uh, when we look at these challenge, militarily speaking, of south part of Gaza Strip, definitely a, a significant military challenge to the IDF. Um, not very much in comparison to the north part of Gaza Strip because it's the same feature, but definitely very significant. And how much would you say this uh, operation could potentially set back uh, Israeli forces in, in terms of, let's say, uh, uh, ammunition, uh, or economically speaking, what do you think? Well, look, obviously when we are looking at, this is a war, and you know, um, every day of a war costs a lot of money uh, in many different aspects. It's not only the military expenses per se, it's also the fact that Israel's major spine of fighting uh, uh, squads and units and divisions is based upon reservists, meaning these are people who are on a daily life are civilians. And so they are being called for this duty. They leave everything behind. They leave their work, they leave their positions, they leave their businesses, and they are going to fight. I mean, this is something that has to be understood. It's very much different from uh, the concept of an army services that we know, for example, in the States. So obviously there is a lot of um, accumulative economic burden when you look from that perspective. Um, and, and, and of course, this is something that has to be taken into consideration and bearing in mind also that simultaneously Israel is also engaged in um, domestic scale, sort of speaking, clashes with Hezbollah in the northern part of Israel. And on top of that, there are today some 125,000 Israeli citizens who became actually refugees inside the state of Israel because they can't live neither uh, in proximity to Gaza Strip, where there is a war going on, nor in proximity to the Israeli-Lebanese border, where there is this exchange of fire between Israel and Hezbollah. So on and all, we are looking at a different sets of components, segments, that in the end of the day, obviously presents from an economic perspective, a very significant challenge to the state of Israel. All right, thank you so much for your time today, Avi. My pleasure, thank you for having me.